Hello and welcome to Microchip Security Channel. Today in our crypto authentication series, we will cover the AWS IoT Secure Authentication use case and will guide you step by step on how to set it up using all the necessary tools to guide you to your first prototype. The solution will be using the ATECC608A Secure Element and the Just-in-Time Registration function from AWS. This solution is part of the device qualification program of AWS. The use case we're building today uh, starts with the creation of a root certificate. Well, not quite. The root certificate per definition is really optional. Today we will start with an OEM certificate creation will be, which will be the roots of our certificate chain. This is what most of the customers are using today. So we'll provide a Python script to create this OEM certificate. Then what happens in the production process, there's a secret exchange between microchip and the customer that allow the generation of certificates on the customer behalf. So the next step for microchip is to create the customer specific production signers based on the OEM certificates because we've had the secret exchange in place. The customer loads using bring your own certificate function from AWS, loads the um, signer certificates into the AWS accounts. Then Microchip derives the device certificate based on the signer certificates. <coughs> the signer and the device certificates are loaded into the secure element, the ATEC608. And then once everything is built, meaning you have a connected um, system, at the first connect TLS connection, the device certificates are loaded in bulk with the just-in-time registration function of AWS IoT, and that's what makes your solution scale. Then at the end of the process, every customer has their own customized part number. And that entire setup is what we're going to show you how to set up step by step to guide you to first prototype. So in the flow for today, we'll cover the prerequisites, what your system needs to have, the tools and whatnot. Then we'll show you how to set up the AWS accounts in a very quick way with everything in place for you to get started. We'll show you how to set up your hardware and firmware. And finally, we'll guide you on how to configure and provision your secure element here, the atcc 608 a Let's start by going to the microchip.com slash atecc 608 a AWS IoT webpage. Now go to the bottom of the page under tool and softwares, access the GitHub repo, clicking here. When you land on the GitHub page and scroll down a little bit, you will see all the steps that you need to take before starting. So those are your prerequisites. You're gonna first need to clone the repository from GitHub. Use the GitHub desktop app on your laptop to do so much easier. And it will avoid you um, to reconcile the crypto auth lib manually if you download uh, the project versus cloning it. You will need to install the AWS CLI. You will need to install a terminal emulator. In our case, we'll use TerraTerm. You need to install Visual C++. Python 3, and at the end, you will need to install Python, the Python package using the pip install command uh, r requirement of text to make sure everything is there when you uh, set the, the certificate chain. So at the top of the GitHub repo webpage, copy the URL and launch the GitHub desktop application. Once the app has launched, go to File on the top left corner and start cloning. Go to URL, paste the URL, select the folder you want it to be cloned to, and then wait for the cloning to complete. It'll take a few seconds. The next step is to set up your AWS accounts. You will go to aws.amazon.com, set up your account profile, register your credit card. Then we will use CloudFormation. CloudFormation is an environment will be able to upload the script that you have access from our web page and upload that YAML format file. 
then we'll create the stack and everything is done. I'm going to aws.amazon.com. When I get to the page, I already have signed up for the console and everything. The first thing I want to make sure of is I'm using the Oregon accounts. It's the data centers of my regions. Then I'm going to look for cloud formation. When cloud formation shows up, I'm going to want to create a stack. There, I will want to upload the YAML file that we talked about that is in the cloned repo we got from GitHub. I'm going to find it, upload it, click next. Then we're going to give it a name, a stack name. Here we give it ZTP AWS IoT for the sake of the example. The username is already set up by the YAML file. And the user password for me will be my code shape for the sake of the example. Click next, nothing great to be done in this page. We click next. Here, we just have to accept the AWS conditions and I create the stacks. The stack is being created. If you look at the status, uh, create complete means everything has been set up. So, so far, you're pretty much done with the AWS account setup. Your account has been entirely set up in less than a few minutes. You have a compute with EC2, you have storage with S3, you have Lambda function, the bring your own certificate is waiting for the certificate for you to uh, to give to. AWS IoT core is also set up, the, the just-in-time registration function uh, with the corresponding Lambda function is also ready to go. The security policies at the high level are set up and the user per permissions are also set up. Now we're gonna have to reconciliate credentials together between your hardware and the AWS IoT accounts. On the GitHub repo, you can see we've cloned the repo. Now it's time to install the AWS CLI. So we're going to click on the hyperlink and it will guide you to the AWS website where you can see it's only one command line, a pip install AWS CLI. So we're going to copy that command, open a terminal and paste the command, execute it to install the CLI. The installation is complete, but it's asking me to upgrade my pip command, which is what I'm going to do right now. The pip is now updated. Make sure again to install putty or Terraterm, install Visual C++ and Python 3. Now we're going to take care of the last step of the prerequisites by doing a pip install dash r requirement dot text in our command line. Open a prompter and we enter that pip3 install dash r requirement dot text. Let it execute. Now we are going to do an AWS configure. We'll be asked to enter the access key ID for to find it, we'll have to go under the outputs tab of the AWS website and copy the access key, paste it back into our command prompt, I click enter, and then we're gonna go and fetch the secret access key. Copy it paste it in the command prompt, click enter. The next line is the region. The region is US West 2. That's why I chose the Oregon data centers. So now we're going to set up both the hardware and the firmware. We'll first update the Wing 1500 Wi-Fi with the latest firmware, and we'll load the SAM55, which is a Cortex M4, with the firmware project. So for the hardware, you will plug the Wing 1500 on the EXT1 port right here and do not plug yet the ATC608 board. You will have a conflict of I2C address, which we are going to address as we program things. Plug the uh, debug port and you're ready to go. Under Atmel Studio 7, go to File, New and example project. In the top right search bar, look for Win 1500 firmware and select the SAM G55 Explain Pro firmware. 
make sure the location of the folder is the desired one click OK accept the license agreement and finish let the project be created then under the firmware folder look for the sam 55 batch file and what location it lives in I'm going to search for this file on my laptop open the file location and simply double click on the batch file that corresponds to my microcontroller this will update the Wing 1500 give the process the time to complete Now we're going to program the SAMG55. Make sure the ATEC608 board is still not connected and we keep the rest as is. Uh, you will be able to now start uh, plugging your target port to your emulator. Putty, TerraTerms, TerraTerm is what we are going to use for our case. From Atmel Studio 7, go to File, Open a Project and go to your AWS IoT folder under firmware G55 and here's the file you want to open. Build without debugging and you can see it's successful. Next we're going to configure the ATEC 608 so plug in your Crypto Auth Explain Pro board or the socketed board and make sure you do not add the Wing 1500 board to avoid again that I2C con uh, conflict. The conflict of I2C addresses will be resolved right now as we configure the ATEC 608A. Make sure you have uh, the debug ports ready to go and the target port because we will start using the emulator. From TerraTerm, I select the COM13 serial port, which is by default proposed. I set up my serial port to a rate of 11.5200. And then I'm being asked to press S0 to start the configuration. So let's be clear at this point. What you're going to see next is just for the sake of the example of prototyping. It's not for production. The solution for production when it comes down to provisioning is to use microchip provisioning services. Let's now build our chain of certificates starting with creating the OEM certificates. Now I'm going to create the root certificate. So I'm going to look for Python script called create root which is right up there i'm entering the command line python ca create root.py execute we are ready now to set up the signer certificates before we start to create the certificate itself we will want to call a python script for a csr so this command is ca underscore create underscore signer underscore csr dot pi. Then only we create the signer itself, which is create underscore signer dot pi. Execute. Now we are going to register the signer certificates into the AWS account using bring your own certificates. So in our folder, let's look into it. We are looking for AWS register signer.py script. Let's punch in the command line Python AWS underscore register underscore signer.py and execute it. This command uploads the certificate into the AWS account. Now we're going to put everything together, the secure element board, the Wi-Fi board, the microcontroller board, and uh, the I.O. board. You can plug both the debug ports and the targeted port to your USB ports of your laptop. It's time to set up the Wi-Fi credential and look for the kit set Wi-Fi Python script. The command line is Python kit set Wi-Fi dot pi dash dash SSID, whatever you choose. 
space dash dash password whatever you choose execute now we are going to provision the ATEC608A it's been configured the Wi-Fi has its credentials the SAMD55 has its program so now we are ready to push the certificates and generate a private key inside the 608 this is then the final step in the certificate chain process where again those device certificates are created and provisioned into the CX-08 along with the production signers. The private key is also generated inside device by the device and we'll see how everything is put together. So going back to our AWS IoT Zero Touch Secure Provisioning Kit folder and look for the kit provisioning scripts, let's enter the command line and we'll see as we execute that the root certificate, the signer certificate, the device certificates are put together and you'll notice during the execution that even the CSR is also executed which we used earlier on. Now the credentials are being provisioned, updating also the Wi-Fi settings. Now let's visualize what we've done. We're going to launch the Python scripts that will pull up a GUI and we also look into the AWS IoT shadow register to see how things are changing, meaning we prove connections and authentication. Back to command lines, we are going to look for a Python script called AWS Interact GUI.py. Let's enter the command line, Python AWS interact GUI.py and execute it. You'll see a small window popping up where you're going to be able to toggle the LEDs and buttons that are on the IO boards. But let's go also to the AWS Management Console and inside AWS IoT you're going to see a thing that has been created Let's compare that thing name that's what it's highlighting here, the C4FE, and pull up TerraTerm. Again, configure the serial port with the right rate. It's 15, uh, it's 11, 5 to 100. And look at this thing idea, make sure it's the same. Yes, it is the same. So we have a proof here that the thing reflected in AWS IoT is the same as the hardware we've configured. Let's go now to the shadow registers and see the shadow register value moving as we toggle buttons. All the buttons are up. If I press on button one, you can see the register shadow going from up to down. Then we're going to try to change button two. So on my hardware, I'm going to push on button two. And you will see on my Terra term, as soon as the MQTT message goes up, the shadow registers update to down. It shows that we established through mutual authentication a communication using secure TLS and secure authentication between the hardware and AWS IoT. Thank you for watching us and if you want to know more about the ATEC 608A and the other use cases it addresses, go to microchip.com slash ATEC 608A.